welcome to a very special episode. We are at the Yalankai Air Base, just a short distance from Bangalore. Behind me, an American F-16 fighter aircraft. I have a very special sortie coming up. I'll get an opportunity to fly this aircraft along with a test pilot from Lockheed Martin. A dream come true for Ratan Tata, a sortie on a supersonic American F-16 fighter. Tata's flight would last approximately 25 minutes and would see Ratan Tata being put through maneuvers like rolls and a few hard turns. Speaking to NDTV shortly after his flight, Tata described his experiences. A terrific airplane and uh, for someone who's not used to it, you end up feeling very timid in whatever you tried to do when I was flying the plane and uh, we did a few things with uh, where the commander took over and did some roles and all of it was very exciting we went down to around 500 feet of the deck and flew around the topography and it's just unbelievable because you just climb over a hill and come down uh, turn on your side or turn over, it's just, just an unbelievable experience. The Lockheed Martin pilot who had the privilege of flying Mr. Tata had this to say. Well, I think he was thrilled with the flight and I was very glad to fly him. I think the high point of the flight was when we flew down at lower altitudes. We flew 500 feet above the ground and uh, about 600 knots where you get a real feel for just how fast this plane can go. For the moment however, Ratan Tata has ruled out investing in the Indian aviation sector. Right now, I think the civil aviation uh, sector is very crowded, but uh, aviation will always be an area that, that uh, attracts me, and, and when an appropriate possibility or opportunity comes along, I will, of course, be very keen to look at that as a possible sector. Mr. Tata, though, is not quite through flying fighter jets. Tomorrow, he's supposed to fly a sortie on a Boeing F-18. At the Yalahanka Air Base in Bangalore with camera person Vino Subaya, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. But that wasn't enough for Tata who went on to fly an F-18 Super Hornet manufactured by Boeing the very next day. It would have been a fabulous experience for Tata who's a pilot himself to get a feel for a very different aircraft. The F-18 is considerably larger than the F-16 and is used by the American forces of their aircraft carriers as well. Tata would have gone into his F-18 shorty after thinking through just what it is that he wanted to do. And the pilots who flew him on the jet told us that they'd let the Tata chairman do pretty much what he wanted. For Ratan Tata, flying fast jets like the F-16 and F-18 has been a dream come true. But for the two American companies that flew him on their fast jets, it's been a marketing exercise. Getting perhaps India's best known businessmen on board made a lot of sense. So what is it like to fly on a high performance jet like an F-16? Lockheed Martin, the manufacturers of the jet, said that they'd put me up on one. Shortly before the flight, I spoke to one of their test pilots. Uh, let's just find out a little bit more about this aircraft and why so many American companies are so keen on investing in India in a big way. Commander Paul Randall joins us. He's a test pilot uh, on the F-16. Thanks very much, Commander, for being with us. Uh, we've all heard about the F-16. Um, what can it really do and why would India be interested in the aircraft? Well, the F-16 is a multi-role affordable fighter. It's designed to do a lot of missions and do a lot of missions uh, very well in an affordable way. Uh, we believe that this airplane is, uh, is something that the Air Force uh, can, uh, can learn quickly and provide the sensors that we need to, uh, to, to fulfill the, your mission requirements. And uh, how long have you been flying this aircraft? I've been flying this airplane for about four years. And it's seen extensive uh, combat service. That's one of the, the defining features of the F-16. It, it continues to be used even today as we speak in countries like Iraq. That's right. The airplane that we're going to fly today is about 3,500 hours. It came directly from combat in Iraq. So we'll get a chance to fly not an airplane that's been prepared for an air show, but an airplane that uh, came right out of uh, Iraq and is a real, a real uh, combat airplane. Paul Randall is one of the most experienced American test pilots on the F-16.
before the flight vandal who goes by the call sign bear gives me a brief of some of the controls of the cockpit of the F-16. And then we can control gain on the sensors here, mm -hmm. some things like that, chat flare, all that uh -huh. stuff. All that stuff set up on the hands-on throttle and stick, mm -hmm. the hotels and right now. With the briefing done, it's time to strap in and go for what could be the ride of a lifetime. We taxi out to the runway and get set for a high-velocity takeoff. My flight would include several rolls and hard maneuvers. We would also get a chance to check out some of the jet systems. It's difficult to explain just what a takeoff in a high-performance fighter plane feels like. You get thrown to the back of your seat as the jet fighter roars across the runway and then takes off. In this case, it went into a vertical maneuver. It's all very exhilarating stuff. Just a few years back, it would have been unthinkable to see an American F-16 in India. This is really a sign of the changing political equation between India and the United States. There's been a huge turnaround in the relationship between the two countries. That's what's enabled America to try and sell its planes to India. That's pretty much the reason why I got to fly this sortie today. I return with a silly grin on my face. One of the big plus points of uh, being a journalist is that sometimes, just sometimes, you can vicariously live out your dreams. One of my dreams has always been to be in a fighter plane and I've had the opportunity of doing this a couple of times but flying on an F-16 has always been a dream of mine and, and getting this opportunity today was absolutely incredible. We managed to pull more than 8 Gs and get a real feel for what it is to be a fighter pilot. At Aero India, the Russians made the world debut of the MiG-35, a sign of just how important India is seen to be a market for them. The prototype MiG-35 is based on the MiG-29, a jet which the Indian Air Force has been operating from the mid-80s. But everything that's inside the jet is completely new. A new radar, new avionics, new weapons and just about everything else as well. I would be the first non-Russian to be given a flight on this aircraft. It would be an opportunity for the Russians to showcase some of the new technology which they've developed for this jet. The ride in a sense would be quite similar to the F-16 sortie. Lots of high G turns, loops and also maneuvers which only Russian jets like the MiG-35 can pull off. Perhaps more than any of the competitors for this deal, MiG will be looking out to win the Indian competition to ensure that in the long run, its future. From the Aero India 2007 event in Bangalore, we're going to take a short break and return with more of the Aero India experience. A close call for the pilot of an Indian-built intermediate jet trainer. Also coming up, we speak to some of the world's greatest test pilots here at Aero India. Pavel Vlasov, Ricardo Traven, Paul Randall. Think of them as Michael Schumacher's in the sky, the world's greatest test pilots. They're all here at Aero India and they're all here to prove a point that the jet they fly and the company they fly for is the best to win the contract for the Indian Air Force's 126 aircraft deal. Just what is it that makes these men tick? Ricardo Traven will soon be president of the International Society for Experimental Test Pilots, an elite group of pilots from around the world who defy death by testing untested aircraft to the very edges of their capabilities. It's riveting stuff, thrilling, frightening and immensely rewarding all at once. For Traven, his F-18 Super Hornet jet is an extension of his limbs and his love for aviation has been around for as long as he can remember. The joy to me is just, uh, it's in my blood really. Um, you know, I stand in front of you, the test pilot for Boeing, but I really uh, started out in gliders at the age of 15. Um, I had my pilot's license at 16. Um, 
purchased my first airplane at the age of 17 and uh, five years later uh, at age 22 is when I got my first car. So uh, it, it, it really has been in my blood. There would be a society for experimental test pilots, is that right? Yes. Are the president designate yes. uh, is what you were mentioning to me. Uh, what's the society all about? The Society of Experimental Test Pilots is a, a worldwide uh, professional society that uh, attempts to bring all of the world's test pilots together under one roof. Uh, we do so by having a number of symposia uh, throughout the world, throughout the year. Uh, the society hopes to take lessons learned uh, from test pilots and share them with other test pilots. It's a wonderful organization in that when we're, all of us test pilots are in a, in a room together, it doesn't matter what military you're from, what company you're from, uh, what competitions you might be engaged with worldwide. Uh, we all look out for each other and we all want each other to be safe and to be alive next year. And so we share lessons learned, uh, uninhibited really, about things that happened to us that year and things that make flight tests more efficient. Paul Randall, who flew me on my F-16 sortie, is no different. At air shows, he'll push his F-16 to close to its 9G limit to get an edge over the other test pilots. At night, when the world's best meet, the competitive atmosphere disappears. Flying overall runs in the blood of these men. pilots apart. I think we all look forward to sitting down and just sharing stories together. Today uh, we have a job to do. Uh, tonight uh, we look forward to getting together and just, uh, and just being pilots together. But if there's one man who has well and truly stolen the thunder at international air shows, it's this man. Pavel Vlasov is the hero of the Russian Federation, one of the most skilled pilots Russia has ever produced. At the controls of his MiG-29, Vlasov is just magic. His ballet in the sky is unmatched. The maneuvers he performs can only be done on his mid 29 jet. Some of them are so unique, they still don't have a name. The most important thing in the pilot's test pilot job is to understand the border, where or how far you can go and when you uh, must stop. I don't know how it's. I can do it, but I've never uh, performing, even finishing a lot of flight tests, a lot of programs, and so on. I've never crossed this very <laughs> thin red line. For all the thrills at Aero India 2007, there was a fair share of sorrow as well. In the run-up to the event, a Dhruv advanced light helicopter of the Indian Air Force's Sarang Aerobatic Squadron crashed, a pilot was killed, and there was a very close call at the Aero India event itself when an intermediate jet trainer also known as the Sitara and also manufactured by Hindustan Aeronautics veered off the runway, went into the grass on the side of the runway in a cloud of dust. Aero India isn't just about flying on fast jets. It's also about what leading aviation companies are willing to do to stay in India in the long run. India after China is seen to be the next big market for civil aviation, perhaps becoming a regional hub for logistics repairs and sales for several manufacturers. Aero India has all been about cashing in on the feel-good in Indian aviation. According to industry estimates, India will need more than 1,000 aircraft in the next 20 years to fuel its booming civil aviation sector. Air traffic in India, which is growing annually at about 7.7%, is expected to double to 50 million passengers by 2010. For companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin looking to sell India jets for the Indian Air Force, investments in the civil aviation sector and a long-term commitment to the Indian market are seen to be deal sweeteners. We're in discussions with a number of, uh, of Indian companies on a wide variety of ventures. Uh, many of them related to the defense industry, but uh, India is just a wealth of opportunities and we're pursuing a number of business interests uh, in here in India, both here in Bangalore as well as throughout the country. Well, a number of examples uh, in the manufacturing area, both in the areas of uh, aerostructures, avionics, uh, in a wide variety of areas that uh, we're in uh, continuous discussions with a number of companies. All this means that hundreds of aviation companies are looking to make their presence felt in the Indian market. Among those interested, 
Airbus and Boeing, the big jet manufacturers, have now revised their estimates on just how many aircraft India will be looking at. Engine manufacturers are looking to power all the jets that India might buy. Cargo aircraft manufacturers are looking to make their mark in an area seen to have a bright future. Maintenance, repair and overall facilities for all these aircraft in India. And training facilities including simulators for both airlines and pilot training schools. The big story of Aero India 2007 is the emergence of India as a regional hub for both military and civil aviation. The deal for 126 fighter aircraft may have been a highlight of Aero India, but other than that, it's the entire issue of outsourcing of the aviation business to India, which is of great interest. In Bangalore, with Vino Subaya, Vishnu Shom for NDTV.